Hello friends, uh, I am Dr. Sudeshna Lahiri from Department of Education, University of Calcutta and today we are going to discuss about overcoming gender discrimination. You already know what is gender discrimination. Gender discrimination is something uh, where the discrimination and differential treatment has been given uh, to a person by virtue of its gender. So gender discrimination is uh, generally inclined to a particular gender and that is for, uh, for and against a girl child and women from the ages. Uh, so it has a long history of gender discrimination. So how we can overcome gender discrimination? So let's discuss about that and we will study together about uh, how to overcome gender discrimination. So first we know that what is gender and discrimination. So it is in 2000s, Indian GDP has grown by around 6% while there has been a sharp decline in female labor force participation from 34% to 27%. The male-female wage gap has been stagnant at 50. Crime against women, brutal crime such as rapes, dowry deaths and honor killing, it has raised tremendously. Every day in newspaper we read about rapes and various dowry deaths and also honor killing. So these are uh, the gender discrimination discrimination against a woman by virtue of her gender. Cultural institutions in India, patrilinearity, which is inheritance through male descendants and patrilocality, married couples, which is married couples living with or near the husband's uh, parents. So a little bit of explanation about patrilinearity and patrilocality. So what is that? The patrilinearity is uh, when the property and anything related to the material gain is given uh, privilege to the male child over female child. So because it is, uh, it is a gender discrimination and patrilocality is when a a girl is married to a groom and uh, she has to move away from her uh, maiden home and uh, uh, join to a new home which is her husband's and in-laws residence and family. So it, these patrilinearity and patrilocality play a pivotal role in perpetuating gender equality and ideas about gender appropriate behavior. The dowry system involving a cash or in kind payment from the bride's family to grooms at the time of marriage disempowers women. So these are few examples and explanations of gender discrimination. Again when we talk about gender discrimination uh, immediately there is one more term which comes into the mind is gender equality in India. UNDP's gender in inequality index which is in 2014 says that India's ranking is 127 out of 152 countries in the list. This ranking is not only uh, is above Afghanistan as far as SARC countries are concerned but also gives a very poor status in relation to 152 participant countries. World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Index which is also given in 2014 um, says that India's rank at 114 in the list of 142 countries in the world. India's position on these indicators uh, which is the gender inequality and uh, gender gap index was as follows. The indicators are uh, before deciding the status and rank of India is economic participation and opportunity and 
the rank is 134th. Educational achievement gives India the rank of 126th. Health and life expectancy is giving India a meager rank of 141st. Political empowerment of women is giving India 15th rank. So it is a nearly a little glary rank, uh, but the other indicators were not that good at it appears to be. Then if we go through the sex ratio, we will get that child uh, having the age group of 0 to 6 years has the sex ratio of 919 and the sex ratio overall is giving 943. Female uh, literacy rate is 46 percent. Maternal mortality rate is giving 178 deaths over 1 lakh live births. Constitutional safeguards is given quite long before and uh, uh, since post-independence our government and uh, different policy makers they are trying to uh, give women a fairer ground and they try to safeguard women and their interest and status uh, in the society through different constitutional provision to reduce and overcome gender discrimination. Let's discuss the constitutional safeguards. So the ratification of convention on elimination of all forms of discrimination against women that is CEDAW in short in 1993. Then the constitutional provisions are having different subsections and subsections in the constitution. For example, equality before law for women is explained in and cited in article 14. The state not to discriminate against any citizen on grounds only of region, race, caste, sex, place of birth or any of them is given in article 15 subsection 1. The state to make any special provision in favor of women and children is given in article 15 3. Equality of opportunity for citizens in matters relating to employment or appointment to any office under state is given in article 16. The state to direct its policy towards securing for men and women equally the right to an adequate means of livelihood is given in article 39a. An equal pay for equal work for both men and women is given in article 39d. Now in addition to the discussed uh, constitutional provisions we are also having in our country legal provisions and judiciary. So the crime against women are broadly classified under two categories. The crime identified under the penal Indian Penal Code which is IPC in short and the second one is the crimes identified under the special laws that is SLL in short. So before we discuss Indian Penal Code and SLL, we will discuss more about safeguard given in constitutional provision. So there are few more safeguards given in constitutional provision. Uh, for example, the state to make provision for securing just and human conditions of work and for maternity relief and that is given in article 42. The state to promote with special care the educational and economic interests of the weaker section of people and to protect them from social injustice and all forms of exploitation and it is given in article 46. The state to raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living of its people and that is given in article 47. So there are few more Indian 
constitutional provision, let us discuss a little bit about it. To promote harmony and spirit of common brotherhood amongst all the people of India and to renounce practices derogatory to the dignity of women and it is given in Article 15A subsection E. Not less than one third including the number of seats reserved for women belonging to scheduled caste and scheduled tribes of the total number of seats to be filed by direct re-election in every panchayat to be reserved for women and set seats to be allotted by rotation to different constituency in a panchayat and that is given in article 243 d subsection 3. There are few more constitutional provision that means we are no dearth of constitutional provision for overcoming the gender discrimination against women. Not less than one third of the total number of offices of chairpersons in the panchayats at each level to be reserved for women and that is given in article 243 d 4. Not less than one third including the number of seats reserved for women belonging to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes of the total number of seats to be filled by direct election in every municipality to be reserved for women and such seats to be allotted by rotation to different constituency in a municipality and that is given in article 243 d3. Reservation of offices of chairpersons in municipalities for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe and women in such manners as the re legislation of a state may be law provide and that is given in article 243 t4. Now what we have been discussing about Indian Penal Code and SLL the crimes identified under spatial law. The time has come then we elaborate a little bit about both the legal provisions and judiciary. So first we will take up Indian Penal Code. Uh, what Indian Penal Code has elaborating while uh, protecting the women and the punishments and the um, articles and the codes under which a abuser can be booked for rape section 3 76 of IPC is admissible for kidnapping and abduction for different purposes of women section 363 to 373 of IPC is applicable. Homicide for dowry, dowry deaths or their attempts are booked under section 302 uh, to 304 B of IPC. Torture both mental and physical and the abuser can be booked under section 498 A of IPC. For molestation the abuser can be booked under section 354 of IPC. For sexual harassment of women the abuser can be booked under section 509 or 509 of IPC. Importation of girls up to 21 years of age section 366b of IPC is applicable. And now we will talk about crime against women and spatial laws and that is uh, in short we say it as uh, SLL. And there are different crimes identified and they are the Employee State Insurance Act 1948, the Plantation Labor Act 1951, the Family Courts Act 1954, the Special Marriage Act 1954, the Hindu Marriage Act 1955, the Hindu Succession Act 
1956 with amendments in 2005 immoral tra traffic prevention act 1956 the maternity benefit act 1961 amended in 1995 dowry prohibition act 1961 the medical termination of pregnancy act 1971 the contract labor regulation and abolition act 1976 the equal remuneration act 1976 the prohibition of child marriage act 2006 the criminal act law act and that is also amendment 1983 the factories amendment act 1986 the indecent representation of women prohibition act 1986 commission of sati prevention act 1987 the protection of women from domestic violence act 2005 the special initiatives for women against gender discrimination uh, so uh, with time and again um, state government and central government uh, they incorporated different plan programs and policy for the upliftment of women and women protection and overcoming the women from any kind of discrimination by virtue of their gender so the there may be many but i am citing few of them like national commission for women established in 1992 reservation for women in local self government the 73rd constitutional amendment acts passed in 1992 by parliament ensure one third of the total seats for women in all elected office the national plan of action for the girl child and that is in 1991 to 2000 national policy for the empowerment of women and that was given in 2001 women empowerment scheme that is also given over the time and since independence the policy makers and government and different quarters of uh, people who are responsible for plan and planning um, of the country uh, they are aware and they are concerned about protection of women from any kind of discrimination by virtue of their gender so government schemes and policies monitored under central ministry of women and child development of government of india they may be uh, the women helpline scheme rajiv gandhi national crash scheme for the children working um, children of working mothers Beti Bachao Beti Padhao scheme one stop center scheme working women girls hostel scheme support to training and employment program for women scheme mahila e heart scheme pradhan mantri ujwala yojana then mahila police volunteer schemes please note that beside these central and federal government there are uh, schemes and uh, programs um, at state level also so uh, there may be different plan programs under state um, they they are also working towards the uh, empowerment of women let's discuss a bit, little bit about all these cited schemes and programs so first uh, there is a women helpline scheme the aim of the scheme is this is the scheme for universalization of women helpline and is meant to provide 24 hours immediate and emergency response to women affected by violence and the scheme has been launched um, on 1st april 2015 and the call to women's helpline is 1 h1 that is toll free number please do not forget to dial if there is any emergency or if there is any alarm to be raised 
राजीव गांधी नेशनल क्रेश स्कीम फॉर द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ वर्किंग मदर्स एंड द स्कीम इज लॉन्च इन 2012 एंड एंड देन री इन टू थाउजेंड एंड द एम ऑफ द स्कीम इज फॉर द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ वर्किंग मदर टू टेक केयर ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन सो सो दैट द चिल्ड्रन कैन बी सेफ एंड साउंड वेन देयर मदर आर एट वर्किंग कंडीशन बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ स्कीम एंड दैट इज लॉन्च इन जनवरी ट्वेंटी सेवन टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन द एम ऑफ द स्कीम इज टू जनरेट अवेयरनेस एंड इम्प्रूव द एफिशेंसी ऑफ वेलफेयर सर्विसेस मेंट फॉर गर्ल्स वन स्टॉप सेंटर स्कीम एंड दैट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज पॉपुलरली एज सखी लॉन्च ऑन on and implemented since 1st april 2015 the funds given in this scheme is from and through nirbhaya fund i hope we all remember the nirbhaya um, uh, in december 2012 for uh, her brutal rape and murder aim of the scheme is to provide support and assistance to women affected by violence both in private and public spaces working women hostel scheme and it is very important since its uh, introduction in uh, 1972 73 and the aim of this uh, scheme is to promote availability of safe and conveniently located accommodation for working women with day care facility for their children wherever possible in urban semi urban or even rural areas where employment opportunity for women exist so that they can live safely even they are away from their home swadhar griha yojana and that is launched in 2001 and the aim of the scheme envisions a supportive institutional framework for women victims of difficult circumstances so that they could lead their life with dignity and conviction so there may be some home for those who underwent through some kind of brutal experiences and unpleasant experiences support to training and employment program for women scheme and stepw it is uh, in short form it is known as like that and it has launched since 1986 to 1987 as a central sector scheme and the aim of the the scheme is to make a significant impact on women by upgrading skills the target group includes the marginalized asset less rural women and urban poor this also includes wage laborers unpaid daily workers women headed households and families below poverty line there is one more interesting scheme mahila e heart scheme it is an online e heart or online market for women where they can showcase and they can sell their products It is launched in March 7, 2016, and the aim of the scheme is to strengthen financial inclusion of women entrepreneurs in the in economy by providing continuous sustenance and support to their creativity. There is one more Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana, and this has been launched in May 1, 2016. from baliya in uttar pradesh the aim of the scheme is to provide lpg connections to below poverty line households in the country the scheme is aimed at replacing the unclean cooking fuels mostly used in rural india with the clean and more efficient lpg then there are few more um, schemes and programs let's let's discuss about them for example mahila police volunteer scheme 
and this is launched through the advisory dated May 12, 2015 by the Home Ministry. The aim of the scheme is the role of police is pivotal. The scheme decides and defines the role of police in ensuring the safety and security of citizens in general and women in particular. National Mission for Empowerment of Women and it is launched and operationalized during the financial year 2011-12 as a centrally sponsored scheme in April 2011. The aim of the scheme is an initiative of the Government of India for empowering women holistically. There is one more scheme Indira Gandhi Matritva Sahyog Yojana and that is launched in October 2010. The aim, it is a conditional cash transfer scheme for pregnant women and lactating women to contribute to the better environment by providing cash incentives for improved health and nutrition. Besides that, there is one more interesting scheme is Beti uh, Bachao Beti Padhao Yojana. There are different uh, states have uh, introduced different schemes and program as well. So there are some schemes at international initiatives to overcome gender uh, discrimination. The Convention on the Elimination of All Form of Discrimination Against Women that is given in 1979 and it provides a comprehensive framework to guide all rights based sections and actions for gender equality including that of UNDP. The Beijing Platform for Action 1995 is an agenda for women's empowerment signed by all governments that is seen as a necessary and fundamental prerequisite for equality, development and peace. The Millennium Development Goals The MDGs Millennium Development Goals in effect consolidated previous agreements including those on women's rights, women's in empowerment and gender equality and into a single set of core goals and these are eight in numbers, targets and benchmarks for the development community. International initiatives also include UN Declaration on Elimination of Violence Against Women. The 1993 Declaration on the Elimination of Violence Against Women is the first international human rights instrument to exclusively and explicitly address the issue of violence against women. International Conference on Population and Development, this is also one interesting and very important uh, initiative at International Diaspora and it says in 1994 International Conference on Population and Development that is ICPD in Cairo, Egypt has a milestone in the history of population and development as well as in the history of women's rights. Women, Peace and Security Framework and Commitments The UN's guiding documents for Women, Peace and Security are Security Council Resolutions 1325 that is in 2000 and 1889 that is in 2009 on Women, Peace, Security and 1820 in 2008, 1888 in 2009, 2106 in 2013 and 2122 it is given in year 2013 on sexual violence in armed conflict. Eight Effectiveness Commitments The importance of gender equality in resource allocation was underscored in the 2008 Accra Agenda for Action that is AAA in short and popularly known as 
building on the 2005 Paris Declaration on aid effectiveness. Now, a gender equality in India that is in the uh, platform of education, how it has been discussed to eliminate any kind of gender discrimination and to protect girls from any kind of differential treatment and unpleasant experience in the platform of education. So the Service Siksha Abhiyan SSA provides a special focus on education of girls. The Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyalayas are residential upper primary schools for girls from scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, other backward classes and Muslim communities. In 2003, guidelines for implementation of the National Program for Education of Girls at elementary level. As the component of the scheme of Sarvasik Shavyan are established. There is few more and the Mahila Samakhya program was started in 1989 for the education and empowerment of women in rural areas, particularly those from the socially and economically marginalized groups. The group education activities curriculum developed for the gender equity movement in schools project in Mumbai, India, included content on gender roles, violence and sexual and reproductive health, health for standard 6 and 7 of girls and boys. So far we have discussed uh, what is gender discrimination. We need to know that uh, what is gender discrimination is all about before we discuss about uh, what is to be done to overcome these. For example, uh, we know that there are two special functions and two special factors of uh, work in education area that is patrilinearity and patrilocality and that is very important uh, when the all the privileges are given to a particular gender uh, depriving the women and a woman has to move out of her ma maternal and paternal house to join her in-laws and with this the discrimination and differential treatment started and the government has uh, literally done very good initiatives um, to protect the interest of uh, women in the form of some penal codes and in the form of some policies, programs and initiatives. In international diaspora also um, over the time these discriminations and uh, the reasons and the protections and the measures are being discussed over and over again in different platforms and in at different uh, countries all over the world. With this, um, we have discussed overcoming gender discrimination in this session. We will meet again with a new topic. Thank you so much.